Hey everybody, welcome to the next commentary. Today we are playing Heimerdinger mid lane on our off meta account versus a uh, Talon. And it should be, I think, a pretty good matchup. Hmm, does he die? Dang. We even have a Blitzcrank too. Oh, well, I guess. I mean, he literally ran past them. When we have a blitz and a lot of people do brush camp that specific location, so it is what it is, I guess. Anyways, from what I've seen, most Heimerdingers are playing support, but also they play so aggressive, and I wish that I could play aggressive too, but I'll probably die a lot. But all I know is that being really aggressive with Heimerdinger is a huge strategy because, uh, the thing is that he's super fast around his turrets, and sometimes you can just plop down your turrets as you have them when people jump on you because they want to get you back, and they get punished for it really bad. So... I think I understand why people play aggressive on it. Oh wow, it even targeted him. And I know that if Rek'Sai ganks me, I might have an opportunity of, like, trying to, uh, land my, uh, E on top of them. How Heimerdinger works is that, uh, when you have down your turrets, they have this charge beam that could be, uh... The charge beam can be recharged by hitting your abilities while in range of the turret. Right there, it didn't give any charge at all. And then when they do their charge blast, it deals a lot of damage. If they are within the, like, Venn diagram of three turrets and they get hit by your abilities they will die very quickly they will take a ridiculous amount of damage or just straight up die so yeah right there i just did a uh, the charge so that was the shot of it what i did is i used my grenade which is my stun and while it's in the middle of the air I decided to uh, put down a turret, so if the grenade lands and I put down the turret, the turret will automatically shoot it. It's a little trick you can do. That being said, it's not the easiest to accomplish all the time. Nice. I got to be aggressive how I wanted. Thank you, thank you for helping me out. My team's already freaking out bot side, but I'm used to it at this point. Uh, we're pretty much like on the off meta climb hard stuck uh, master slash high diamond because uh, every single game is just dictated within the first two minutes. Uh, people have gone AFK in more of my games than ever before. People will give up, they'll run it down, they'll hold grudges from previous games they will make sure that you will lose but we'll see how our team does because they're typing but that's not actions just yet until they actually run it down it's different anyways we're going to be doing w max make it so uh when we use our rockets which is uh you shoot these rockets in a little line and it, it encloses on your cursor so if you put your cursor very close to you they spread out but they all aim towards the cursor so the goal is really is there really people here i did hit him with my grenade but it doesn't even matter one's also not popping ghost so i guess there's just no way to get them Wait, he's just gonna be in that brush? Okay. Um. <laughs> Alright. I mean, my cane's kind of dying, but... I'm doing pretty good with my grenades right now. I knew his positioning when he was gonna jump over the wall, so... Heimerdinger is one of those champions where his spells are pretty long cast time and with his e the stun only the center of it stuns the rest of it slows so you do want to try to land the center of it uh and it takes a while for it to reach its destination so a lot of it is like huge 
like prediction of where you, your opponent's gonna move. And it's pretty, in my opinion, difficult to always land stun, which really impresses me with good Heimerdinger is how good they are at landing their stun. And of course, sometimes the best play that you can make with Heimerdinger is just don't use your ability until melees are on top of you. So if Talon jumps on me, you can just do this because there's no uh, distance it has to go, so it's just almost instant cast. It's really insane. I've seen support Heimerdingers as Brush Camp before. It's a really viable strategy that I've seen plenty of times. Damn, look at that Talon go. <laughs> Why is this guy running away? <laughs> That guy's dead. No. <laughs> I couldn't get the last guy. <sighs> oh well. At least I have my item now. I have another shutdown because he killed me in the middle of the fight. And like shutdowns kind of uh, update out, out of combat. So believe it or not, that could have been worse. Because we could have given him an even worse... Uh, amount of gold there is, but hey, I'm fed. <laughs> Relying on a guy that doesn't play any Heimerdinger to basically 1v9. I mean, Gwen's doing fine top. She's just even, but... Nice, he landed it. I think that guy's just dead. Cool. I mean, I almost died too, but... Hey, it works, right? If it works, it works. I'm just going to base. There's no reason to push this out. It's probably too ballsy. Although, I did have my ultimate coming back up. What your ultimate does is it empowers your next ability. Um, so, puts down a big turret. That's what I did bot side. I was hoping that they would walk into it and fight me, but they didn't. Um, but it also makes it so it shoots way more rockets, but it comes in waves, so they need to be, like, stunned or just not moving for a long time for you to land all of them. But that ability does, again, ridiculous damage. So if I do get ganked by Rek'Sai and I stayed mid and I was low, I maybe could have baited him in. And if I do land stun, I could just one-shot him. So it was just a thought. You can also do spread rockets like this to make sure that they land no matter what. So, just cursor close to you. Let's hit the tower a few times. I'm probably going to get ganked. I'm imagining. Damn, big damage there, huh? I feel like this guy's getting pretty upset about the whole scenario that he's in. So he's probably asking for Rek'Sai to gank it. If Rek'Sai suddenly tunnels in, I guess I might just throw my uh, stun right on top of myself. Because I'm going to predict that they flash on me. Dang, I was hoping that would land just to, like, stop his base timing. Oh, well. This guy definitely wants to do, like, a all-in. I can tell. The thing is that I kill him, but it's so easy for him to just press all of his buttons on his keyboard. So, <laughs> if he just presses them all, I die. Even if I land... I'm pretty sure I landed almost every single rocket for my ultimate, but it doesn't matter because, uh... Talon's spells are kind of weird where if if he just presses his R and then I think he just Q's you, it automatically will go on to you anyways. So it was kind of hard to find an angle where I could kill him without also dying. Kind of was thinking that I would no matter what. 
Damn, he is so fast moving speed wise. I guess he has a Relentless Hunter maybe? No, there's no way. I guess he's just fast in general. Oh, that was some pretty hefty damage that I just did to him there. My ultimate's up in 19. Dark size bot. Where's Talon? Bot? So Talon maybe started Dragon then? I'm scared that Talon's gonna jump over one of these walls and go for the balling, but. Dang, she lives, really? God damn, bro, they all lived. I even hit rockets on that guy, too, but he lived, too. This rocket legitimately healed every single one of them back to full. God damn. I mean, I think I know what I should build next now. <laughs> if they didn't have Soraka there, I'm pretty sure every single person dies there. Legitimately all of them. Oh, well. Happens, I guess. Not really much that I can do about that one. Gwen died top also. Well, I mean, Kane has his form pretty damn early. I'm still, like, super fed, too. So I deal plenty of damage. Although, in terms of being fed, I'm just, like, even with a lot of players. Like, Talon is just as strong as me now. And so is there Ezreal, so I'm just fed compared to the other people. I'm gonna hit that. I really want the plate. It's worth it. Taking a tower shot for that. God damn, my ultimate's on a low cooldown. Sometimes you can even brush camp too. I'm going to put that in there just to see if Talon rotates. But if you have three turrets, you can just put your turrets, all three of them, down inside of one brush and just have them walk into you. I'll just use everything here. Nice, my turret's hitting him. A little bit of damage on him there. I think that they're going bot again or something. My Ega's vision. Good thing I did that. I don't think a bot lane fight is going to break out anymore. It looked like there might have been, but... Take it back. We'll just shove this out again. Dang it, dude. I really want to put inside the brush. At least we hit him there. Although, his healing is kind of ridiculous, so... I mean, good thing I got even more anti-heal. Just not only for Soraka, but I guess because this guy also has that Ravenous, so... It's a double whammy. We got multiple ways of reducing their uh, health regen. Mm. Talon TP. Kane has no ultimate. Whoa, dude. You actually deal so much damage, it's nuts. So that guy's just dead. That's what I was talking about. If I have three turrets in there, that is way easier. But when you land your stun and do your empowered W, it hits so hard. I mean, right now, my W hits for 500. I've seen Heimerdinger's build Death Cap as a first item before, and it works. I don't even know how these people, like... Heimerdinger's cook up some amazing builds. <laughs> like, 
death cap first item, and then they just start killing everybody is just such a crazy concept. Anyways, where does it show the damage? Max damage on my ultimate W is 1.1k. That being said, um, I did fight him at level 10 instead of 11, but you get the picture. Ultimate cooldown is also, like, super short. If you ever don't want to use your ultimate, you can also press it again and it cancels it. So then uh, it goes on a lower cooldown or no cooldown. Nice try. Good attempt. Ooh, nice. I hit you. Not bad. I'm probably going to be going bot now, yeah. Okay, there's Rek'Sai. Kane is pretty strong, it seems, so he probably can beat this guy in 1v1, right? Oh, nice try. You might have not killed him, but... I saw Rek'Sai go topside, so there should be nobody down here. I maybe should buy Sweeper, just so I can walk into a brush somewhere after I shove out. I'm just gonna put that inside that brush, just in case I get ganked. I just use my grenade, which scares me, because it's always better to have it. So basically, if you just sit in here and just wait, sometimes people walk in. That being said, this brush isn't like maybe the best to catch on rotation. The reason why people walk into these brushes is because it's like between lanes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the He's dead. So after people, and this is for almost any champion in the game, after they shove a wave, they normally will always rotate back into river to look for like ganks and stuff. If they're like a split pusher or something, they might continue pushing the same lane, but the majority of champions will eventually go back into the river because they need to, uh, Rotate to another lane because now they fix the wave and they can go group with their team or something. So that's why the Heimerdinger, like, sitting inside of brushes works pretty consistently. Because that's just, like, a, a gameplay thing that people do. Should I just finish this completely? Does this give more Grievous when I build it all the way? No. Huh. Then I should just build a full death cap then. Let's let's truly do the Heimerdinger strategy of full death cap gaming. That talent is probably not gonna fall over the same play twice. Yeah, he's already running somewhere else. He's just walking into the brush down here rather than <laughs> through try. That's okay though. Oh, he got hit by my turret. Hmm. It's probably gonna jump over the wall, right? All right. Peace out. See you later. I know we do Baron very quickly. Their Ezreal is still such a big problem. Wait, they're starting it? Okay. I mean, they started it so late. Nobody can really go bot. The person that should be going bot is Gwen.
Dude, I'm hitting this guy with absolutely everything. The reason why we should be fighting is because this challenge is split pushing, so this is a numbers advantage fight. We need to be playing more aggressive. <sighs> Trying to push our advantages. Oh god, I'm kind of scared here. I'm going to leave. Oh, they're on it. Hmm. I'm just patiently waiting to see if anybody's going to walk in because I feel like they might be brush camping just to see. I doubt that they're back on it, so I'm going to go heal. But it seems that they keep on trying to do it over and over again. We do have two dragons, which is great. Your ultimate turret is a giant turret, by the way. It just deals a bunch of damage, but normally people just run out of inside a team fight. So normally, I don't see people use that very often. And then the grenade is one that bounces. It does, like, not the same... Okay, it does okay damage... But even if it hits multiple bounces on people, as it keeps going, it doesn't uh, deal bonus damage or anything. So it's not really that special, except for just slowing people down. And then the rockets, which just deal a ridiculous amount of damage because the AP ratio is like 200%. Well, I definitely die. I put down my turret. The big turret, by the way. And it instantly died. But that's okay. Because the fight was good for us. Like, really good. Because uh, Soraka dying at the very beginning, absolutely humongous. A lot of their uh, people that, like, really matter a lot because they had giant shutdowns died. That's good, man. Nice. Good job, guys. Considering how bad that Orn ultimate was, too, like... I mean, it's just amazing that we were able to get this rock at the beginning of the fight. Yeah, Talon's AoE and, like, items just shred my turrets immediately. It's pretty annoying. It's, it's such an annoying feature of playing anything that's, like, minion-based, where you, you summon things. They just always die so damn fast. And if, if people have, like, certain items, they just die even faster. I guess I'll just stay top here. We only need one dragon for soul, which is great. I don't have my Zhanyas or anything, but I'm getting so close to my death cap. <laughs> I'm going to be hitting so hard. Dude, I'm going to pretend that they don't see me. Dang, I was hoping that Blitzcrank would stay inside that brush. Because if somebody went for me, like because I pretend that I stand in here, he could probably easily hook. Oh, well. I wonder if Talon's too tanky to one-shot anymore because he has, um... A Black Cleaver now. I'm gonna go buy my item. I'm gonna buy a Sweeper as well. Although, most of the normal wards that I'm going to be clearing, we know would be Soraka's. If we ever go side lane, <clears throat> there's no way that there should be vision inside, like, brushes. <clears throat> because, uh, Talon doesn't have that trinket. Oh my god, dude. 
Oh, what? That's not, that's not allowed, bro. How did that land on that guy? That's insane. No, dude, that was like so illegal. All right, well, let's hope that it doesn't get smite stolen. Oh, God damn, my damage is high. I plopped down the turret again. The big turret. Ezreal might come back. <laughs> oh man, dude. I'm actually. Dude, look at all these pings. Thank you, thank you. I know. The Heimerdinger performance of the century, guys. Timer shreds Baron if my turrets live, but I needed Kane to tank. I don't know where he ran off to. Yeah, so the big turret is just tank here and deals bonus damage. It has the same exact properties of the charge shot, though. So, like, when you have it out, if you can land your abilities, it does have a charge shot. And as you can see, that deals 500 damage. 70% AP ratio. You can see the shots right here. Wait. Wow, the charge shots on the normal turrets are already very high. So, basically, like, why you can one-shot people. 425 damage per charge shot. Multiply that by three plus 1,700 inside of a brush plus your E, which is like another 500. So you're dealing thousands and thousands of damage immediately. Um, so yeah, you kind of just one shot everybody, which is why Death Cap is so popular. I mean, right now, my normal cast W does 800 damage. <sighs> Might as well be a Lux Laser, except for it's on a super low cooldown. Pretty long range, too. Maybe harder to land than a Lux Laser, though. There is, like, a Talon over this wall. That guy's almost gonna die to just me doing that. I probably... <laughs> I just did so much damage. <laughs> I just have level 16 now, so now my, uh... Empowered W does 2,000. My god, man. Oh my god. Why is this guy so aggressive? Because he's a tank, I guess? Yeah, we only need one more dragon, so we should really try to commit uh, our resources here. Um, the Orin can't even get back over one. Okay, cool. Well, let's just uh, <sighs> do everything that we can to prevent them from coming over to us and succeeding because my team's pretty strong. We got our Zero Fortress Donna of Wonder and our uh, Kane. I'm almost full build at 30 minutes. I guess so is Talon. I mean, he does have like 100 CS on me, basically. 2.1k. Really? That seems kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Did they just kill my turret instantly? That seems kind of unfair, man. I'm gonna be honest. With me landing my E plus W on them, with my tur big turret being down, I really expected them, at least one of them to die. I honestly expected both of them to die, because, I mean, I'm hitting them with a ridiculous amount of damage. Is it just getting smited? I, I hate that. That's actually such a weird thing that probably should just be completely removed from the game. Like, nobody can really use summoner spells on uh, minions, except for junglers. <laughs> what? How is that allowed? 
You completely remove my entire kit with a... Uh, something like that. With the summoner spell. Oh no, guys. I'm sorry that I died. Don't tell me that this is going to cause issues for us. Uh, okay. Damn, this guy just doesn't die, does he? It's the Soraka, man. When Kane dies, it might be over. The Soraka is just too much. Unfortunately, it looks like we lost the game, potentially. I mean, they should just wave clear. Oh my god, what an amazing display of skill by the Talon there. I think he jumped over the wall and hit Triss with just pressing his buttons and she died. You can't even jump away from it. Talon as an assassin really upsets me. He's such a good character. There's so many high elo Talon players just because of how ridiculous he is. I mean, we only lose inhib. We don't even lose our base or anything. It's whatever. I still need uh, my full Magi's, I guess. That will be the uh, next item that I build. I really want to build a Void Staff. But, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I would have to sell something for it. I guess technically I could totally just not go anti-heal and just bet on my team. The only real problem is really the Talon. I mean, sure, Ezreal's very annoying, but it's probably still fine. Oof. Oof. That was so damn close, bro. Damn, Gwen, really you're gonna go in? Okay, well, at least you didn't die, dude. I mean, you are a tanky Gwen. If I landed those Ws on a Talon, it probably would have killed him. It's the most tragic part. Do we just want to give the Baron? Gwen's bot. Alan is going to try to kill Gwen and then end the game. No, Talon's rotating now for sure. We literally see him walking over. I could totally sell it for Void Staff, can't I? Screw it. I'll, I'm going to do it, dude. I honestly think that the anti-heal isn't even that important. What matters is just landing my combo, and I think that they just die before the heals maybe even go off. And that could be my best bet to uh, winning. I'm glad that we're finding Talon. Because, uh... Me and Tristana getting picked would be so bad. Picking him would be amazing, but... You can always ulti out, right? They are indeed on it. Nice. They're killing everybody here, dude. 
This seems like a such a good fight for us. Yeah, it's probably game. We can't push out in mid because uh, even though it's open inhib. We don't have a way. I don't think we can end. Can we? Twenty five seconds. You know, it might just be possible. Oh my God, man. Yeah, it is definitely just over. Nice. Thank God, man. Oh, I thought it was over for a second from those throws, but it's definitely over for them. Got her. Just stun into ultimate W there. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary. What a what a difficult game. My god, man. Well, that was probably the best time reading game that I game that I'm going to get in a very long time. I don't think I'll be able to do that very easily again. I'm gonna give it a cane. I mean he kinda smurfed it after the pretty bad early game that he got himself into. Damage dealt very high. Pretty happy about that. And yeah, so thanks for watching once again, guys. In fact, I'll just look at the um, gold just in case because I feel like we were losing, right? Wow, well, yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, we were losing for more of the game than I expected. Because there were points where I honestly thought we were winning. I guess it really took that long. It wasn't until the triple kill that the game finally swung into our favor just barely. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a like on the video and subscribe if you like full game commentaries like this one. If you made it to the end of the video, surprise. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the next video. Um more Heimerdinger, so we'll see how that goes. I have no follow-up for if uh, Blitzcrank lands his hook because not starting turrets I think is pretty damn bad. Uh, same runes as my previous game, but I do have... Well, it's literally exactly the same, actually. I mean, I literally have armor, too. I am versus Silas, so the armor is not going to help, but uh, I was worried that there are people who do Silas jungle, and if I was versus Talon mid with no armor... That would have been pretty bad. So I don't mind not having magic resist because at least uh, he has some abilities that are dodgeable, like his E and his Q. So he is melee. I mean, similar to Talon, he has a way to jump on top of me. I mean, I might be able to buffer my stun or something if I get hit. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to be trying to uh, pressure him just with auto attacks and such. As we scale. I don't know if I'll get as good as a early game as I did last time, though. My early game last time was kind of ridiculous. Oh, my turret didn't get it. Wait, is he? No. Okay. He... By the way, that's what I'm talking about with, like, playing aggressive. You should totally just let people jump on you. It causes no problem whatsoever, because then you just can uh, combo them by putting down tur- What combo? I'm just putting down turrets in front of my face. You just put down turrets, they get punished for it, it feels great. I do have Ignite, so I want to be playing aggro. Nice, I made him miss the cannon. Plus, he messed that up too. I wish Talon jumped on me, man. You see how, like, scary it is when you have this these three turrets set up? Uh... Because he knows if he jumps in and I do land my stun, he'll probably instantly die. Like, <laughs> there's really no way to get away from it. 
me missing my thingies there kind of sucks. This guy born shield. He's probably gonna base now to buy. Should I just buy as well? I guess I could. He might try to stop my base, but... Okay. We'll just go AP and movement speed. I think we might not miss a single minion, too. Because, uh... I reset on a pretty fresh push. He went Dorans. So he has double uh, starting items. A little bit different than what I would consider Dark Seal, because normally Dark Seal like, can be used almost later as a Medjai's, or just sitting on it with stacks and stuff. But having a Dorans and two Dorans is like completely different. That's just like super playing for lane. Making sure that he just doesn't get punished, most likely. Oh my god, thank god my turret just got it. I was so scared I was going to miss that for a second. Yeah, I actually failed some Heimerdinger videos, like, weeks ago. And I feel like the thing that made it so now I'm succeeding is literally W Max. I think that when I was doing Q Max, it was not good. They're trying to dive a set. I mean, they were successful, I guess, in a way. Just putting down my stuff, kill him with my wrenches, and we'll just ru run back mid lane. I got what I wanted. I don't have turrets, kinda, so if for some reason, like, Talon jumped all the way over after resetting, that would be pretty bad. I don't think I could beat him in a 1v1 that easily. This guy got blue buff off that? Man. Whatever. Are you gonna have your jungler gank me too? Level 6, though. I know that inside the previous video, I looked it over, and also the time that I lost my uh, turret topside in the 2v1 versus Rek'Sai, and, uh... No way this guy jumps on me. I'm gonna put down all my turrets, actually. That was so close to landing. I think it's worth attempting that. If if for some reason his dash, he dashes like the wrong direction into my uh, ultimate there, I'm gonna just kill him. We'll try to shove in this wave and then reset. Oh no, he messed up. He tried flashing for it and I don't have any mana. So he took my ultimate, but the rockets is such an awkward use because it has a cast time, and then after the cast time, you're still shooting multiple rockets. It's kind of like using a difficult... It's like, I don't know, using a Lucian ultimate, but you have 200 ping because of how long it takes for it to actually shoot. And you're probably not as mobile, too. It just feels bad, <laughs> so... When he tried doing it versus me, it's so easy just to, like, know what he was probably trying to attempt and just sidestep downwards to dodge it. Although his flash Q maybe could have been the death of me if he just played it better. I'm sorry I missed that because I'm bad. I wanted to land my stun, and I was waiting for everybody's stun to go off, but... I should just... So this is like a trick that I learned about when I first was watching the very good players, uh, Insect people with Lee Sin. Insect is like when you're queuing somebody on Lee Sin and flying at them, and then you ward hop behind them. I found out that a lot of the time, if you look at the mouse movement of the good players that do it, 
they have their mouse behind the person and they're constantly readjusting because um obviously people move and such but um they have the mouse behind them way in advance so then right when they uh get in range of it they just immediately press just ward plus jump and it will automatically do it and i know this sounds really dumb because it sounds like yeah why would you not have your mouse there but having it in advance is actually such a i guess unique idea from what i've seen for difficult uh to do things like insects because whenever i've tried to do inside the past i just think that uh i would try to do it a little bit later I would move my mouse a little bit later. So similar, similarly with uh, my teammates fighting here, I should not care about where my character is at the moment. I just click that I'm coming over and just forget about it. And I just do this and just wait and just let Heimerdinger throw it whenever. I think that's, that's smarter because I'm trying to like use my character and there's no reason I should just have my character uh, basically be AFK walking. Turrets can't hit tower. Damn, I kind of did some decent damage to that guy, huh? Yeah, Heimerdinger seems pretty damn strong against melee characters bro there's no way for them to do anything to me what the too bad i don't have a my ability <clears throat> talon alive yeah, I mean, Talon probably won't die just because he would have these guys probably healing him. I should probably just go by, if anything. I just want a base. I have my uh, Lyandries already, too. I'm already super fed. Game's in a pretty good position. Why, why are they lane swapping? Oh! They're probably lane swapping because maybe Silas is just like, I don't want to play versus Heimerdinger anymore. Like, <laughs> he just l left to go bot. He's like, you guys... Wait, what? Okay, no, he's going mid. I don't really know what's going on. But I'm totally down to be versus you side lane if you really want to be. The Pantheon, after he bases, could maybe look for an ultimate onto me. I'm just going to put down two turrets, save one, just in case something bad happens and I need to run away. The Lyandries is super annoying. Because I can't hit turret. I'm just putting these down so if like Talon suddenly jumps over the wall to try to gank me, I can do something. No, oh, I didn't even notice that he's mid nice. Huge. I'm going to do some spread turrets because I feel like it's more important to just continue poking this guy than anything else. Dashes forward at me. Doesn't even want to use the chain because if he lands it, he might just get one shot. Constant suffering by sight. Oh, wow. Hmm, that little bit of damage is kind of influential. I should probably just leave. I'm 
somebody might rotate into me. I'm going to not stay directly inside of the brush. He might think that I base, though. Because the turrets went to sleep. When you're not near them, they stop shooting. Okay, or he just base himself, I guess. I'll just go back to fixing the wave, and then I'll just reset myself. I maybe could get that plate, but it's probably better for me to just leave. Let's just get our Rylai's. Or I could just go Death Cat. I mean, it's kind of late for that since I already bought this Amp Tome. I'll just have to sit on 600 gold too, which kind of sucks. All the objectives are easily being taken. I'll probably just be hitting bot lane over and over again and just taking the tower. <laughs> what is Talon's build? A black cleaver first item? God, he is really tanky. Okay. I mean, his damage is a bit less when you do that, though. There's no way that he should be dealing more damage with a black cleaver than a lethality item. I might be able to get this tower and still just immediately rotate to Rift Herald because that's the only objective really coming up super soon. And I think that would help out my team a lot. Talon's here. I mean, Talon might run into me, maybe. It looks like they're just giving Rift, so I probably don't need to rotate all the way. Damn, he would have face checked this. If I had the turrets plopped down in there, it could have been huge. I'm going to put a ward behind me because uh, I still think Talon might try to rotate somewhere. Oh, he did the Everfrost? Not because of a gank, he just was trying to poke. Okay. As soon as Silas ever plays aggressive, I just always will try to think that I'm being ganked. Put down turret inside of that brush because I didn't know if Talon would maybe be inside of it and it scares me. Oh, thanks, man. Dragon is ours. I, I put my turrets in the perfect spot where it doesn't hit it. Oh, I think I did stun him there. I actually did it finally correctly. Using my stun on the perfect spot where Blitzcrank hooked. I'm gonna die so fast, but I think that they died too. The thing is that my turret was DPSing quite a bit, and they used so many resources, like flashes and stuff on me. Kinda sucks though. I didn't want to die that way. The Pantheon, kinda strong, dude. Like, he basically did everything to me. Our comps kind of relying on resets, so... I mean, they have a huge uh, front line that also is just really difficult to get through, so... <clears throat> That's a pretty bad death to have. Oof. At least we're only one dragon away from Soul. She had uh, so much money on her. We might be able to try to rush Baron if uh, we just sweep it. What the hell is 290 nub? How did I mistype so badly? Is 
someone might rotate. I probably need to go mid. I mean, not mid top, sorry. Somebody assist ping mid. I don't know if I want to actually rotate over and help with that or not. Coming back over, but... Oh. I really wish that, uh... I can sit inside this brush longer, man. Because I, I swear somebody's going to come over. Oh, they're bot? No, definitely not. 50 seconds on Baron, then. I just need to shove out. Good job not dying bot side. That's actually huge that he lived. My team just needs to not do anything mid, really. I mean, if we just don't do anything until Baron spawns, and uh, Set does a good job at soaking pressure... The 20 minute Baron is so easy to do. Mm, they're not doing nothing. They're unfortunately playing over aggressive. Hey, but they escape. Nice, because they have Trillias. Thank God. They are immediately rotating to Baron. Yeah, I'm just kind of leaving. Okay, well, I. Okay. Why did Viego base too? Set has TP still. I definitely die. Put down the turret in hopes that maybe we can get some damage off. Set probably should have never TP'd in the way he did. Although this all, is all kind of stemming from the Blitzcrank death. That was really strange that he was basing on what looked like very easy to see vision control. So, hey, nice kill. Yeah, as long as they don't do Baron, though, it's just a few deaths. It's not like gonna amount to too much also pantheon's death was super bad because his timing of his death was uh when dragon might spawn so we might be able to just rush dragon even though kaisa died topside pantheon will still be dead for like four seconds or five seconds so if we can just rush this asap it's actually okay they're definitely going to contest too because Tarek's movement just makes me feel like everybody's coming yeah they are just finish it. Just commit every single resource on it. Got him before his ultimate came off. We also finished Rylai's too now, so... I hit Sona with so much there. I just flashed in place just to show off my <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> I just flashed in place. I was trying to flash away from Pantheon by moving my mouse this way while also putting down a turret at the same time. So, you know, trying to do two things at once made me kind of mess it up pretty damn bad. All I'm happy about is that we landed a lot of our stuff onto that Sona. Because uh, getting her out of the fight is kind of maybe more important than like anything else because her healing is so annoying she makes the front line just so much tankier and difficult to kill i'll probably just go straight death cap next i'm not gonna go anti-heal or anything i'll just try to go damage i won't even go zanyas or anything still need anti-heal badly I will avert my eyes. Don't look at me, dude. I'm not doing it. Yo, Pantheon. Can we kill this guy? He might be in one of those brushes. 
Nope. Heard he left, but Viego's on top of him. Viego's kind of losing, though. Hey, Tarek. I might get Pantheon ultied. If I do step up too far. It's kind of scary. Please leave my turrets alone. Okay. They ultied mid. Even though I'm kind of late to the fight, I feel like it might still be possible. Or not. Well, I guess I'll just continue pushing bot. I think that's the best thing that I could do at this point. Kaisa got flanked pretty damn hard by Pantheon there. That was pretty unstoppable for me to like contribute to just because he has a global team just has to respect it this guy has a stopwatch damn we just hit so much damage on him there the turret's gonna keep hitting me but that's because of Landry's. There's no way for me to do the, like, uh, trick with my W there because he flashed for me, but... Okay. You used your flash for me. You got me. The thing is that now you just used an important summoner, and it might net you, I guess, the tower. Although they probably would have gotten the tower even if I didn't die. My way that I think about the game is that flashes are pretty damn important. If it's only for like a small amount of objectives, then sometimes it's worth to keep it. Because, I don't know, like now he won't have flash for Elder. So if we start Elder and he doesn't have it and then he gets kited, like the whole entire game is over now. So... We'll see if him using it there was a smart idea. Dude, too bad Viego's, like, not coming over. Dang. He's, like, clearing vision. That Bloodscreen Cook could have been so massive. Also, I'm kind of shocked at just how much damage my turrets did to him, even though I didn't even have, like, uh, that much. I think I only had two turrets hitting him, and it did so much damage. I have death cap and base. I feel like also his flash was kind of telegraphed. I wonder if I could have uh, predicted it. It would have been so nuts to land a grenade on top of myself when he I see him walking through my turrets at me. Hook him, hook him, hook him, hook him, hook him, hook him, hook him! Okay, it's whatever. Nice, he died. I think I don't need to use my ultimate here. I'll just pop it, actually. There's no reason not to. Pantheon has no flash, so he's probably just dead. Talon probably just ran back through my turrets, too. Getting those kills probably just mean we win the game now. God damn, my turrets do lots of dragon. 40 seconds on Baron. Not sure if we necessarily needed to win, though. Heimer ultimate is such a low cooldown. It says that it's a minute, which feels long to me, but it feels more like 40 seconds for some reason.
There's no way somebody would rotate into me, right? <laughs> it actually never gets old. <laughs> I was thinking that Talon probably won't go that way because he'll probably jump over, like, the walls to blue. That's what I thought, but I guess he really did go that way. I'll build anti-heal now, dude. Now that I finished my death cap, I'm okay with it. I just wanted to finish death cap. He's very excited. <laughs> very excited about it. Hmm, I don't have my ultimate to fight this guy. Well, I didn't get it by my own thing, so that's good. I'm guessing my team will just go win. I mean, we do have elders, so there should be, like, no way to lose. I was just gonna split push, because Heimerdinger's split push is pretty damn broken. Nice. Let's put a turret down so it shoots it, so I can get through the turret. Oh my god, wow, it tanks three shots? Wait, that's actually beneficial. No, wait, don't end. Let's, <laughs> I don't know. Kill the guy on spawn. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary of the other Heimerdinger game. Uh, less of a, a stompy one, but definitely did my job and had some... The same mindset of like how I should be playing teamfights. I imagine my damage is high. Because KDA doesn't always necessarily tell the truth about how much damage you're dealing. And I feel like a lot of times I was getting people low, just not securing the kills. Yeah, it was high. I honestly expected it to be higher than Kaisa. Although at the end of the game, it might have influenced it because I think she killed four. She killed four people. I probably was more damaged before then. Anyways, thanks for watching once again, guys, and I will see you guys in the next commentary. Bye.